Hi guys! This week I've got a new German camouflage tutorial for you. I'm going to be talking about a swamp pattern as I guess it translates in English. This one is a lot like splinter pattern in a lot of respects. It has basically the same colors, a little bit of difference, but it's trivial and it comes in the same two variants, either more green or sort of more brown. It was also used extensively by the Wehrmacht along with splinter pattern. Probably splinter pattern is more common, um, but you mostly see the swamp pattern on sort of the uh, camouflage sort of smocks, either the single layer or reversible models and those were those were those were the main pieces of clothing that was really used on where a splinter pattern you see more on the Zeltbahn ponchos or on helmet covers. Now the big difference between the two patterns really is that while splinter pattern has nice hard edges and is quite easy to paint, a swamp pattern has these soft blurry edges that make it really relatively difficult to do. Um, I have experimented around quite a bit with looking for techniques that might sort of simplify that process or make it more doable in a reasonable amount of time, but unfortunately I really couldn't come up with any. It's just hard and the only way to deal with it is doing a lot of blending and having a lot of patience. I'm going to be demonstrating for you on this figure. It's by Artisan. He's a very simple unit as you can see. Very little equipment. And I did that on purpose because I really want to focus on the camo. I've done tons of tutorials already on German uniforms and German equipment. You can check those out if you want to know more about that. This is really going to be on the sort of the camouflage smock he's wearing mostly. And yeah, we'll paint the other things too. But again, I don't want to get caught up in details here. This is obviously a pattern that's probably not very suitable for applying to large numbers of men in one of your armies because of the time and difficulty involved in it. And the end results are probably not going to be so massively different looking from splinter pattern that it's really going to make it probably worth using. And I think that's one, and that's the main reason I guess I haven't demonstrated for you before. It's a lot like splinter pattern. It won't look very different on your units and it will take you a lot more time to do. Nonetheless, I thought I would show it to you anyway. So, you know, if you want to put it in, mix it in with a few, you know, figures or, you know, just put it on some special figures or whatever, you will know how to do it. But again, this is, I would, I would really label this as an advanced pattern, even though it looks simple, I would call it an advanced pattern that is really more of sort of a nice to know for special situations and probably not something that you're going to want to put into your, you know, kind of regular rotation for painting German soldiers. All right, so since the camo smock is the most important thing we're going to be painting here, I'm going to be starting out with that. So I'm going to apply a base coat here that is a mixture of Vallejo tan yellow and just a little bit of beige brown to darken it a little bit extra. And all I'm doing here is applying a base coat. I want nice even coverage. And because we're working over black in this case, you will almost certainly, not, not even almost certainly, definitely have to apply multiple coats here to get good coverage. I'm not going to show you the entire process, but you just need to keep applying layers of this paint until you don't have any more of that sort of black undercoat showing through. Now in order to develop some further contrast, I'm going to apply a wash here of Agrex Earthshade. Uh, I have thinned it down a little bit because I'm applying it over a relatively light base. So you want to mix it with a little bit of water, not too much because you don't want it too pale, but enough so that it's just not too intense. And then you want to just mostly focus on getting a nice sort of smooth, even coat with a lot of color getting down in all of the recesses. Okay, so my first highlight here is going to be just pure uh, tan yellow. I've thinned it a fair amount, and my main goal here is just to get a nice smooth, even finish on all the areas that are not folds or creases or recesses on this model. I mean, obviously that's why we applied the wash, so you want to make sure those stay dark, but I want to get the sort of flat, smoother surfaces more even. And the paint is being layered here, so you know, I'm going to apply sort of one overall coat, and then I'm going to go back in and brighten up and sort of thicken the coverage of this color on areas where a lot more light is hitting, you know, just to get it brighter and to develop some more different tones and uh, contrast in this particular model. 
My next highlight involves layering over um, Iraqi sand. Now, you could do this as well with buff or uh, dark sand or another slightly more yellow light tone. And the reason I went with Iraqi sand here is it's a little bit browner, it's a little bit pinker, it's not quite, it's not so quite so yellowy. And our base colors are already quite yellowy and I want to tone that down a little bit because in a lot of these examples that I saw photos of, it's yellowish, but it's got a little bit more of a sort of a browny gray cast to it. So I'm using the, um, really the Iraqi sand to help bring that out. My Iraqi sand is pretty thin here. It's a pretty strong, intense color. So at least to begin with, I'm going pretty light and pretty thin and blending it out. Um, and then again, as with the other colors, I'll go back in, apply a second layer and, you know, really start build it up more on areas of high highlight, like all the wrinkles and folds and elbows and, you know, along the back, all that kind of thing. But initially, you know, you want to be just a little bit more gentle and then you can always just, you know, build up more color later in places where you feel like it's needed. And that's an important thing to remember anytime you're working with a very light uh, highlighting color like this. And because really this uh, smock is gonna get a lot of patterns on top of it, I'm not putting nearly as much time into highlighting it and really getting a good finish as I might if it was just gonna be straight up this color. So I'm just doing one final thing here. I've mixed some white into my Iraqi sand and I'm using that to apply sort of edge highlights and really extreme highlights here and there along the sleeve edges on really sharp wrinkles and creases sort of along all the bottom parts and the seams and everything like this but again i'm not really going to overboard here this is just kind of a very sort of minimal kind of job that i'm doing at this point so as i said at the start of the tutorial i'm going to do a version of this camera that has a really sort of dominant green to it so what i've done here is i've taken the iraqi sand i've mixed just a little bit of camouflage olive green into it. I want it to be a very pale minty green here that uh, has a lot of sort of color similarity to the yellow base because that way it'll look like it's kind of fuzzy and blending into it. Uh, if it's too pale then you won't see enough difference so you've got to kind of experiment to get the right amount of green in there. But then I'm going to start painting these kind of blobs on. Um, all over his jacket. It's a little bit like during the splinter pattern, but we don't want any sharp, hard edges. They can be kind of round and fuzzy and more vague, you know, kind of like, uh, I don't know, kind of like you took a paintbrush to it or like you've got some clouds or something like that. And this first area needs to be the biggest um, areas, uh, bigger than the sort of May, n might otherwise really want because you're kind of exaggerating here because that's important to the overall blended look. So once you've got that that in, then you can see I'm going to mix a little bit more of the camouflage olive green in there, and I'm going to start working on the centers of each of those pieces. So I'm uh, sort of gradually building a darker green center, and you know, with that lighter green kind of now as the outlining color, and just kind of building that up. You want to do it in steps because the more steps that you're able to put in here, the better and more uh, blurry edge these shapes are going to look, which is really what you want. I've even made a very, very light mix there of the Iraqi sand and the green, which I can use also to sort of help blend that lightest level of green out better into the um, yellow base color. That's really helpful to have just when you're doing this, you don't want to work one color at a time. You probably want to have all the sort of shades that you need uh, on the palette at the same time so that you can kind of work on blending them together. And now I'm just taking the main color, the camouflage olive green, which is as dark as I wanted to get. So I'm taking the undiluted color here and applying it really in the centers of all of those spots. And then you can see it, it, you get still a little bit of a hard edge effect. So then I'm going to be using those other greens that I've already got mixed on my palettes to help uh, blend out that sort of middle darkest green and get it to be a little bit softer edged, you know, kind of where necessary. If you apply it sort of lightly and watered down over the top and blend it out, you can get a very convincing kind of blurry effect. And what we're doing here is we're, we're, we start from sort of the lightest um, shade of the green and sort of worked 
then up to the darkest in the middle. So this is one way that you can then approach painting these sort of blurry shapes. And then I'm going to paint the brown areas on the camo. And these are much smaller spots relative to the green. And they're almost always going to be touching green areas. And sort of just to give you a different a potential approach to this, instead of starting with the lightest shade and working to the darkest, with the brown spots, I'm going to work in the darkest shade going out to the lightest. And which method you choose is really kind of up to you. It's kind of preference. You may find that going one direction or the other is more logical or works better for you. But anyway, this base that I have for the green, or the brown, I'm sorry, in this case is as dark as I want it to get. And it's a mixture of beige brown with a little bit of black red in there just to, well, just to give it a little bit more of a darker tint and also a little bit more of a red tint. So what I've done here now is, as you can see, applied the um, shapes in the darkest shade I want the brown to get. And then I'm going to take some of the Iraqi sand and uh, lighten up that dark color. And you can see I'm going to start then outlining those uh, dark shapes with that lighter color and sort of blending it into the darker center as I go and kind of smoothing it over so that there aren't any hard edges left. And then again, just with like the green, I'll make a third uh, color as well with even more Iraqi sand, so even lighter and just blend those edges that I just created out again, even more into the base color. And again, wh whichever direction you go, it's helpful to keep all of the different shades on your palette at the same time so that you can, you know, kind of evaluate the shapes. And if you see any areas where there's really obvious sort of hard transitions between different um, colors, you can then go back in and sort of layer lightly over them with, you know, whatever color you need to kind of get a smoother, more subtle transition going between the different colors. And as I've maybe shown you in other videos, washes are another great way to help build up contrast and depth and complexity and camo patterns. And I'm going to be doing that here a little bit too. First, I've got some Reichland Flesh Shade. It's a nice red-brown, so it works well with the brown in the camo pattern. And I'm going to be pin washing here and kind of applying it basically anywhere where the brown areas sort of go into shadows or down into folds or something. And that'll just help exaggerate better sort of any sort of contrast and you know just develop some more shades more tone and same deal with the green i'm going to take coelia green shade and do that with the green spots sort of applying it very uh you know strongly down in any folds or creases where the green kind of goes and then that create some nice contrast between the sort of surface of the green and, and the bottom. And you can also use these washes very nicely to help blend areas together in the color areas, sort of the lighter colors into the darker ones. The wash is good for this. You can't use it just by itself, but it is very helpful for helping to smooth these areas together and intensify the color a little bit, you know, just kind of like as a filter, I suppose. Now I'm just going to start taking care of the other areas of the uniform. This is stuff I've all covered before, but again, I'll go over it quickly. So I'm base coating his normal uniform and hat here first using German camouflage.
basically highlight the black gray areas here. I've got German gray out and I'm just applying it in the case of the boots at least pretty much everywhere except the deep seams and creases which are going to stay black and then the mess canister it's again going to go pretty much everywhere except areas where I want to you know have there be a little bit of shadow and then I'm just going to grab some white and lighten up my German gray slightly you could use another color but white was already in my palette and it's perfectly fine for lightening gray, uh, black in this case so you know I'm just going to do that and I'm going to use it you can see to just put some quick uh, easy sort of highlights on the shoes a little bit and just a little bit on the canister and then I will lighten it a second time and then use that just to put some very extreme highlights on the leather boots not too much really uh, because you know you don't want to go overboard with that shininess and I won't even apply this to the canister because because it doesn't need to get any uh, lighter really. And you can use this really light gray kind of white color as well to go ahead and paint the eagle emblem on the front of the hat. Next, I'm gonna base coat the wooden areas of his rifle and also the little leather strap on his water canteen using some German camouflage black brown. I'm then going to highlight the brown areas. I've got some Blair chocolate brown here for that. Now, sometimes or usually, if I've got more leather on a figure, I will spend more time getting a sort of a distinct tone on the gun and on the leather area. But because it's only this one little strap, I'm just really going to use the same shades on everything. And you're really not going to see. So the chocolate brown really wants to go pretty much everywhere except sort of down in the darkest sort of lines and sort of dividing pieces between the elements in the gun and the leather strap and then I'm just taking some cork brown here and I'm mixing it into my chocolate brown to get a lighter shade and I'm going to apply that on this particularly onto the rifle stock to really you know uh, lighten it up highlight it and you can see I'm kind of applying it lightly kind of blending it out uh, smoothing it out to get some you know interesting range of color you can do the same thing on the leather strap. It'll only take a second. You just need a few little strokes here and there to emphasize a few areas. And then finally, I'm just going to take pure cork brown. I'm going to use that as an edge highlight on the butt. I'm blending it out, but otherwise, I'm applying it just kind of as a line, and that helps emphasize further the sort of differentiation between the different parts of the gun. In this case, the metal areas on this figure are really minimal and really simple. They're mostly just the action and kind of parts of the rifle. There's maybe a little buckle on the canister canteen if you want to paint that. I'm just base creating these areas here with a mixture of German gray and Vallejo Air gun metal, uh, keeping it nice and dark, of course. And just, yeah, you can see just really putting it onto the metal parts. And then once that's done, I'm just going to grab a very light coat of pure gun metal and kind of brush lightly over all of the sort of raised metal surfaces to give it a little bit of a shine and a little bit of a highlight but again don't go overboard here because as we know these sort of metal parts on more modern guns shouldn't be too bright and shiny looking okay so here's our finished world war ii german soldier wearing a swamp pattern camouflage smock uh, just as I said at the beginning of the video, this pattern was definitely more labor intensive than painting the splinter pattern. I wouldn't say that it was really, really bad, but certainly if you want to be painting a lot of guys, this kind of pattern gets tiresome and probably more time consuming than you really want. I also don't think the effect is quite as good as with the splinter pattern. It's not that I don't think I painted this pattern in a way that was you know, reasonably effective for this scale. And given the sort of limitations of the medium, I think I actually did it pretty well, but it's just nonetheless, I think these blurry edge patterns just don't look as nice at 28 millimeter. You, I think at this scale, sharper, crisper patterns are just gonna be more attractive, more eye-catching. There's more, they give more contrast. And it just, it, it, this size, it's hard to do these softer patterns, no matter how well you paint them and just have them look good. And it's just purely a case of scale. It's the same thing as why, you know, you, you can't paint really, really complex fabric designs or things at this size always and have them look good because it's just too busy for the scale. This is maybe not too busy, but it's just not 
I don't know. I, I think it, it, I think it doesn't. This it's, it's reduced to a point where it stops to look good, or as good, I guess, as the sharper patterns will. But again, I think this is still a useful technique to know. Maybe something that you want to work into some of your units, a few figures here and there. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, share it, leave me comments with what you thought about it. Uh, you know, if you thought I this worked out, if it does it for you or not. And of course, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Um, so I think that is all for now, and I will see you next time.